Hello everybody and welcome back to the Connects Robot Build series. This is episode 5. Where we left off, I was working on the control panel, hooking everything up to the transmission in the right head, and I also ran our first basic program. Right now this is kind of apart so I don't run into it. I have made a few changes, just some minor things to this area, so I will go over those really, really fast. The control panel looks a little bit different. I made this this is going to be the crank, it just isn't on yet, but I made it in the center of it so it'll look a lot better. I also changed the gearing a little bit. This will decrease the amount of torsion that occurs due to this long shaft that goes down and around. So now this crank right here is hooked up one-to-one -to, -one to the tape as far as the speed goes. So I think that will make it a little bit easier to adjust it. I have counterweights on these levers now like on this one, and the counterweight on here is mainly just um, for the weight of this whole section. It makes it more balanced when you're adjusting it, and there's also a small weight on the transmission lever back there. I'll just kind of get a view of the inside here. I have also been working on some inputs down here, the ones that I left off in the last episode. This is the one that makes the robot go into writing mode, and this is the erase module. I haven't hooked this one up yet, but I plan on making this one and that one hooked up to the same um, control. And right now this just comes over here, and it will pull out like that. And so this will actually be running across all of the control panels and control um, at the same time with one lever. A major change I have made is I decided to make these towers half the height that they used to be, so now they're about 4 feet. I'm mainly doing that because I really don't think I need the full 8 feet of height for the program. This right here should still allow the robot to run for 30 seconds, um, 30 seconds of unique movement, so then it will repeat back to the beginning. So I think this will be a lot easier, and, and I won't have to build as much of these chain links, which takes a really long time. And that is the piece of the tower that used to be on top of this one. One of the main concerns with this project is this chain stretching out over time, as I've mentioned in previous episodes. And so I have been using these things to um, hold the chain up. I call them detensioners, but I don't even think that's a real word, but whatever. And right here I actually made a new version that kind of slides in a lot easier. And that's what it looks like. But I think what I'm going to do instead is have rails on the side like this. And this prevents the tape from coming out. And because of that, I can basically have just one set of holders down here that pushes the chain up. I'll try to do it with one hand. Okay. So if you hold the chain up and it is looking like that all the way up, you know that the chain is in compression. It's, so that means none of it is hanging and that means it's not stretching out at all. So that will be a much better solution than just um, dividing it into sections that are still hanging and slowly stretching out over time. Because that's the case here. This right here is the part that goes through the most force. I guess it would be a good idea to test this out and make sure nothing gets stuck. It looks like it works pretty well. One last thing I forgot to mention is that I added a pin in the back here and that is a snap cap on the end and this keeps this transmission control centered when it's not activated because when it's not actually touching the transmission without that pin it could just slide wherever it wants. But now it is held in place 
and then when you activate write mode, it smoothly goes over and covers the white rod. I have to admit, even though it's more convenient to have shorter towers, it does look a lot less impressive than having them going all the way up to the ceiling, especially because it's basically at the same height as the control panel, and that's at like three feet. So what I will probably end up doing later on when everything else is finished is I might make these towers be up to six feet, so that would be about right there. I think that'll be a good compromise um, and give about 40 seconds of runtime on the program. I know that in the last episode I said I would start replicating these modules um, in this episode, but I think what I'm going to do first is build the robot arm, which is something I've been waiting to do for a while. The reason I'm doing that is because I actually have a lot of space here to work on it, and when I add these more of these towers, they'll come out to about right here, and there'll be hardly any space to build anything at that point. So it would be better to have the arm finished first. I finished the other side, so the tape is now in compression mostly, and that will prevent any chain stretching. The only areas that are in tension is uh, this down here and these other sections, but they're so short that it shouldn't be a problem. So thinking about this robot arm, the main challenge here is that three inputs all have to converge on one um, axis and then go up and split back off in, into the three joints. And this is pretty hard to do with connects because we don't really have um, concentric shafts or gears that um, have no center on them. However, I think I will kind of cheat and make only two of them come to the middle and make the other one be outside. The only disadvantage of that is it won't be able to turn around 360 degrees, but I don't think that'll be all that much of an issue and the workspace should still be largely unaffected by that. You'll see more of what I mean when I actually get started on it. The first thing we need to figure out before actually building the arm is where it will be and how much space it will take up. So right here I have a template of the towers and where I plan on putting the arm. Right here is the beginning of this tower and then this will be the beginning of the second tower, and this one will be the third tower. And it will come out about to here, and this is where the gears are. And that would be that set of gears on this module that will be here. And so I plan on having the robot arm come out to about here, and be about this long. So this is a, about a three foot radius, going all the way around, and there is enough room for it not only here but on this side which is good because I still need some space here just to get around and be able to build the other parts. The towers will end up going about back to here so they will pretty much take up the whole rug space in that direction. Here is the center of the robot arm, and this is how I plan on getting three different joints to fit on one axis. The one on the bottom controls the gears in the middle, and these will all have chain coming out. And the gear on the bottom controls the main arm, that's the first joint. That one down there is the second joint, and the third joint is controlled from up top. So all of these can move independently of one another. It's hard to film with one hand, but... Yeah, that's how it happens. And so in order to power this one up here, I'll have to have something come around in the back of the arm that is stationary and goes down to the base. However, I don't really want it right next to here because then the arm won't be able to rotate a full 360 degrees. So I'll probably have it come up and go into that tower structure right there and go all the way back far away away outside of the robot's workspace and attach um, to the back, whatever the back um, control is, and that's going to be this one right here. What I might end up doing with this though, is that right now I'm using standard chain, but I'm kind of thinking of using micro chain instead with these little uh, black sprockets, and I think that would fit a lot better, because I could basically fit 
um, two chains in half the space, one on top of the other. One thing I forgot to explain is how I'm making two inputs come in from the bottom through the same shaft. And I'm doing that by having these clips right here rotated in that direction towards the gear. And I don't know if the camera's focusing on it, but that allows this to rotate with the shaft in the middle um, being locked down so they can move independently. A nice thing about using these sprockets is that since there are holes around them like that, I can do the same thing with that. So they could be like that. Here is the robot arm so far. Right here we have the second joint. And that goes like that. And then the one on the top will be the third joint. And that comes across here and down to there. And that will go across to the end of that. And then the joint on the end of here, the third joint, is going to be the one that goes vertically. Right now this thing is getting so big and heavy that it's starting to wobble a little bit, so I'm going to actually attach it to the tower, and then eventually when I replicate these modules, I'll move it out. This is what I have so far for the third joint, and that is just this thing that slides in there like that. It uses these little wheel pieces on the back to keep it um, in place can show it like this. And there's a piece of uh, micro chain that goes the whole length from the top to the bottom. And that goes through one of the sprocket gears right there. And that also goes around wheels right there and right there in order to um, be directed correctly. And then that comes down to that one and that'll go on to right there. And this whole thing will attach to right here and hopefully it won't be too heavy because it's, it feels pretty heavy as it is. Here is the arm with everything hooked up and yes I do have a bag of wheels on the other side acting as a counterweight. The only issue with this whole thing is that everything's just so heavy that everything has to be counterweighted like that and there's one over there that's um, solid pieces and that makes it really difficult to get everything moving just because of how huge it is. It basically acts as a giant flywheel. So that means that it's going to be really difficult to start and stop this thing. And even when you do, it will kind of go back and forth even if you lock the input. So I'm not really sure if I'm going to be able to go through with this particular design. But here is the third joint going, just for reference. Another issue is these all the other joints basically have to be locked if you turn one of them or else it will do that instead of actually um, just making that go up. So what I might end up doing instead is just keeping this last part here but make that slide back and forth along a track. That way I'll be able to get rid of this portion right here and at least then I would still have to rotate this thing with a counterweight back there. However, it would still be easier to control just because the first joint won't have to also turn around like that. It'll be a lot less heavy, I think. Here is part of the track that I will be using for the first joint. And on it will go these things with uh, wheels on it and they'll go between them like that. And there's going to be another one that is at the top, and that one is built right there. Here is the first joint, mostly finished, and it pretty much goes the full width of the rug. And the reason it's so wide is so I can get as much workspace for the robot as possible, especially considering that this arm really doesn't go out that far. So in the middle, there's this carriage that slides back and forth on wheels. And the wheels are shown right there. And it's pretty easy to uh, slide back and forth, so that should be making or that should make it nice to control the robot correctly. Here is what the whole robot arm looks like currently. The gears I have to control it is this top one right here, which controls the second joint, and I'll probably move that down below later on. 
and there's one in here that controls the third joint, which I have locked right now. What I will probably end up doing is moving this whole track back a green rod because right now I would like it to be able to move this close but it can't because it would get in the way of the support frame like right there so moving this whole thing back will allow it to go all the way um, close to that bottom tower I'm also going to try to make sort of a track back here for some stability. I know there's a counterweight here, but that will make it be less wiggly. I know this is in a strange position right now, but I just wanted to film it before attaching it into the track. What I ended up doing was making this arm one blue rod uh, longer, so now it can come out farther. And the other main change is the counterweight has this um, plate that it is supported by in the back on the top here and that makes this whole thing a lot more stable because before it was only using the axis to keep it from wobbling in that direction but now it has this plate back here which helps a lot I also moved these top wheels back a green rod and also moved the track back and that allows the arm to move a lot closer to the frame like that And this is how I plan on running all the joints from uh, strands of chain. So we'll, the chain will come up here, around there, and then back through there. And there's also a chain behind that, right next to it, and that goes to here. And this here is the third joint. And this right here is the main arm, or the second joint. Here's what it looks like hooked up, and it works pretty well still. I think the main reason it's so smooth in this direction is because of using tires on the wheels instead of just using the plain wheel. This thing is really heavy, but it still moves pretty well and doesn't really require much force to move it. And here's that part turning. And the third joint is even a little bit easier to move than it used to be. Right now, it'll just slide down if I don't lock it in place. And here's how much it sticks out in the back. Hopefully there'll be enough room back there, but I think there will be. We are about at the 20 minute mark for the video, so I think that concludes this episode. I'm really happy with how I was able to make this arm work out even though the original plan didn't really work and that's still over there. I think that plan would still work if I made a, um, a track for the other counterweight sides kinda like that back there. It just would have been really huge because it would have had to have one around the main radius and one around the smaller radius so I think that this will work out a lot better. In the next episode, I plan on hooking the chain up and finishing up the controls for this arm. And then I plan on starting to replicate these modules. I hope you all enjoyed the episode. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.